She taught you to dig? Mm. Yeah. How you old were, were you? Mm. How old were you when you Five lived? Old. Five years old. old? Yeah. And Cuckoo and taught it, you to dig? Yeah, he taught me how to dig. Mm. What, what uh, were you planting? Yeah, for coffee? planting, coffees, everything. Everything. Do you enjoy? Yeah. I enjoy. It was a very bad, hard life. Then he imagine when he was growing, I started to, to, to send him to, to borrow my friend's milk. Then I carry this milk, I go in the market, I cook chai, I sell, I got money, I took to school. When I found the teacher, I said, teacher, help. No man, but you help me. The teacher was very kind for me. They said, we know. Then <laughs> Eight out of ten looking <clears throat> pupils quit school for the fees. In actual sense, in, 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 in theory, education is free in Uganda. In practice, it is not. Uh, children have to pay school fees. Uh, they say they may say building fund. They may they may say remedial money. They may say examination. They may say uh, uh, they may say uh, ream of papers. They say uniforms. They say lunch money. Everything totaling together comes to a huge amount of money that uh, people in villages are not able to pay. If we have three problems in Uganda or in Africa. We have poverty, disease, and ignorance. And ignorance is the biggest. <laughs> he was my leader. Sam was my leader 25 years ago. He used to command us which car to drive, which car to push, how to push it, and the money collected. He was in charge and he would give us the little he could. When I got when I got opportunity to get exposed, to get back to school, I am completely different exposed in the world but he is in the same village doing the same thing he used to do and he has been doing it for the last 25 years that's why i say if any child given opportunity they can explore completely have no opportunity 
of exploring or realizing or uh, uh, bring out their best. For example, if I look by myself, if I remained in this village, I think I would be as anyone else. And I would be vulnerable as anyone else. But uh, moving away from here to Mbale, I was exposed to great opportunities. I was exposed to news, information. I was exposed to reading and meeting different people, talking to people, different people, seeing diff people how people do things differently. And I began to think, how can we do some, bring up some little change in my village? If we can have 1,000 children educated, get information, get exposed, I believe they will come back and influence the village, the next generation. And we keep one at a time and changing lives one by one. This is a memorial day. We are in a wake up junior school, and this afternoon we've just uh, started the foundation of a three uh, classroom block that is going to be built using the stones we broke from here and uh, the bricks that we have uh, brought from Mba down in Bali. Uh, we started this school in mud house where we just molded mud on sticks and but the requirement of government is that before you are licensed you should have a building, a permanent building. This school we hope it will help the children of the community uh, that they will access education and not just education but quality education because in our all our area we don't have uh, a place that offers quality education and like I always say the quality of life people live depends on the information they have and how, and how they apply so in here everyone lives on uh, lives traditionally everything they do is tradition learning from what our grandfathers did and what the fathers are doing and what the children are doing but if children have education then they will have a different perspective they will think differently uh, starting dreaming and starting a school uh, has been my life because when I was growing up I loved and I desired and I wanted and I always prayed that if someone would be able to take me to school and uh, I thought if I ever got the opportunity I would like to have to help a few children go to school most especially those who from struggling backgrounds uh, homes that have no opportunity and uh, those ones who will ha never have anything. Uh, today, the, the whole day, I have had a word in my say, dreams come true. This has been a dream of my life for a very, very long time. And I can see it coming true. It is coming true. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, looking at the uh, different people I have worked with, I've been with, who were my leaders even when on the street, they are still doing the same things we did 25 years ago because they never had opportunity. Me, who had opportunity and moved away from the thing I was in, I am a very different person. I, I, I made sure I, I wanted to learn better English. So I began reading anything. Anything I would set my life, my eyes on, I would read it. And that is what changed my life completely and so. And uh, in 20, 2010, 2011, I ran for member of parliament. 
Uh, I wanted to be a, a member of parliament, a representative for my people with a slogan, the voice for the voiceless. I am a voice to the people, uh, to the, a voice for the people who can not speak for themselves. When I'm, I was among the strongest. I had a public, uh, I had the public uh, support and the people. And, uh, but uh, uh, things happened that uh, in this country people fear competition because there was intimidation, there was um, uh, many, many other things. And when I withdrew from the race, this is the statement I made. I, say, I quoted Martin Luther King and said, I refuse to believe that the Bank of Justice is bankrupt in our country, but I believe one day justice will be served to everyone. So I still have hopes that one day I'll represent my people and I'll bring real issues to the, uh, to the public. I don't care what kind of tumbling blocks have come my way. I have a belief that one day I will stand and I will raise my voice and everyone will hear the voice because I carry the voices of the people who cannot speak for themselves.